video, I want to welcome you to the world of the atom. The atom, the wonderful, indivisible, kind of, not really, thing that makes up everything around you, and you as well. We're made of a bunch of tiny little spheres, and I guess now we're going to learn how to describe those spheres. So there's three main components of the atom. One is the electron, two, proton, three, neutron. And they can be found in different regions. The nucleus, which I'm sure you all know at this point in your life, is this in the center of the atom and it contains the protons and the neutrons. Outside of that, we have the electron cloud, which contains the electrons. So these particles differ in a few ways. One, they differ in charge and they differ in mass. First, the charge, electrons have a negative charge. Protons are positive and these two will be equal to each other in a neutral atom. They balance each other out electrically. And the neutrons have no charge. Now, you might think, well, what's the point of them? Well, what they really do is they hold the nucleus together. Because the protons are positive completely, if they were so close to each other, they're held together by a nuclear binding energy, but those positive charges too close to each other without any buffer would repel, all matter would explode, and we wouldn't be here to have this conversation. So, very important stuff, and the ratio of those is very important. We'll get that a little bit more when we talk about nuclear chemistry. Now, the mass of an electron is tiny relative to the mass of a proton. And you're looking at these numbers and saying, well, those are all tiny, but really this is a proton is almost 2,000 times the mass of an electron. So these are their masses. You might notice that there's a slight difference in the mass of a proton and a neutron, but very, very negligible. And for the sake, all intents and purposes, we're going to assume they both have an atomic mass of one. So, an atomic mass unit is defined as one twelfth of the mass of an atom. So you might think to yourself, I mean, mass of a carbon atom, carbon twelfth atom. So this means it has six protons and six neutrons. So, if its mass is exactly 12.00, how can it be made up of 12 things that have a mass slightly greater than one? And the answer to that is, in the formation of a nucleus, some of that matter, some of this mass actually gets converted to energy. And this is actually probably the most well-known um, scientific equation, Einstein's E equals mc squared, where energy is equal to the mass times the speed of light squared. Some of the matter actually gets converted to energy in nuclear formation reactions. Okay, so that's what that is. Now, carbon atoms can actually exist in multiple forms, and a lot of elements actually have multiple forms, and we call those isotopes. Now, the number of protons determines the identity, so all carbon atoms have six protons but they can differ in the amount of neutrons. Really, there's a couple different isotopes, but for the sake of this video, let's just assume there's two. This is the most common one, and this one's the one that we use for carbon dating. When we're looking at how old an artifact is, we look at the rate of decay of carbon-14. So, when you look at the periodic table, you see that there is the number six for carbon, which is the atomic number, again, not changing, and then you see this number that's not exactly 12. And where this comes from, this is the average atomic mass, which is the average of the masses of all of the isotopes. If you took all of the carbon atoms in the world and took all the isotopes and you averaged out their masses, that is what you would get. So the sample problem I'd like to do for this video is say that if you assume that those are the only two isotopes of carbon, carbon-12 and carbon-14, and we assume that carbon-14 has a mass of exactly 14 atomic mass units, and carbon has an atomic mass of exactly 12, how could we determine the abundance of each type? Well, Clearly, since the average is closer to 12, there's more of the carbon-12. If it was north of 13, then you would say there was probably more of carbon-14, but 12.011 is obviously much closer to carbon-12, and we'll check our answer at the end to make sure that makes sense. So here's what we can do. The average atomic mass is going to equal to the abundance of one isotope times its mass, plus the abundance of the other isotope times its mass. Now, if there's more than two isotopes, which there really are for carbon, we would just keep going with more of these, but in doing this, what we do is we set this to represent X is the abundance of carbon-12, because that's what we're looking for. And then I set the abundance of carbon-14 as 1 minus X. And the reason for that is if we're assuming those are the only two isotopes, the whole fraction, the whole portion of it, minus the portion that's carbon-12, is going to be equal to carbon-14. So that's how we're going to represent it. Then, just distributing, we get these for values, combining like terms, and then Isolating the variable, we get that x is equal to 0.9945, which means that if those were the only two isotopes of carbon and that was the average atomic mass, 
your 99.45% of the atoms of carbon would be carbon-12. So again, the nucleus contains the protons and neutrons, and that's really not where most of the action happens with an atom. That happens out in the electron cloud. We're going to spend a large deal of time on this, but just a little bit here so that you can learn how to identify elements based on the number of protons and identify different isotopes based on the number of neutrons and use those to contribute to the average atomic mass.